well here we are again uh we're slowly getting the shop like somewhat cleaned up maybe you know i'm trying i'm trying got like too many things going on at once and it's just it's gooder so we got the battery charging for the parts mustang for this mustang for the drivetrain because we got to make that car run and perform well before we throw it in here um the good thing is is i already replaced the um uh, i believe they call it the tiff which is the fancy word for ford for the ignition control module because uh we don't have spark in it and guess what that one's a good one that's why she's in the toolbox why test whenever you can just throw parts that was a big dummy move i i read somewhere online like mine the only time my mustang ever let me down that 5.0 boy was whenever that tiff module went out yeah this wasn't the case so we're going to go another route and actually do some testing this time but not on this show this show is about the mullet machine now since our uh our miles per hour doesn't work that well i mean it works but it like says that you're going you know back to the future speeds in town um we're not gonna rely on that and attack this is what the tack's doing i hope you guys can see this should i get a light or should i just make you guys squint let's get a light um where did our light go? We just had it. It's uh, literally right there. So that's good. Not going crazy at all. So that's that's even more good. All right. So don't hit the car, please. So it looks as if I, we, uh, yeah. this is what she's a doing. Let me get it over on the tack side. Oh, good. Now you can see. As you can see, <laughs> she's tacked out and the uh the oil pressure like barely moves and i know this car should have oil pressure because it runs pretty darn good without any chatters okay now the good thing of it is you don't have to replace the whole gauge in fact i bought my piece off of the evil bay this is a company that is veteran owned he has a 100% back guarantee. And apparently it's called the uh, Cajun Tack Shop. Yeah. For this, you're going to need a either 5.5 socket and a T15. I'm going to show you on this gauge cluster I have sitting out over here to show you exactly where the bolts and stuff are. Now, I haven't removed that one yet, as you can see. But this will make it a lot more gooder to see. You gotta take, well, not with that one, the T15, take out all of these screws, okay? Now, whenever you get to this part, you'll have to use the 730 seconds and or the um, 7.30 seconds or the 5.5, and you got to take off this plastic screen. Okay? So. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that to the real car over there. And then I'll let you know. I think you have to use this again to actually get the tack out of it. I think it's secured with the exact same screw. I'll let you know here in a few. So, give me just a few minutes, and then uh, I'll let you know. This hopefully is a good short and sweet and to the point video we're kind of we're kind of hoping on that it's uh I'm, I'm dressed in my monday best yep oh yeah nothing but the best so let me get that thing out of there real quick or at least see if these are the only two parts and parts tools you need and then we'll lay it all over here on my new workbench and you know we'll put the new thing on there and see what's going on all right give me just a few minutes Okay, now I'm super impressed. Uh, 
The guy's name is Greg Johnson that owns this uh, Cajun tax shop. I'm guessing he's around Louisiana or something for Cajun. You know what I mean? Louisiana. Yep, there it is. Okay, so get a hold of him on your eBay store there. And look at this. I mean, he had this sucker. It was wrapped up tighter and I don't know. But look at this. He's got it all laid out for you and detailed instructions. So as I was telling you, or showing you, what have you, if you don't buy his, then shame on you. You should. Anyway, after you remove this piece here, you'll also remove this black piece surrounding your gauges. Where your turn signals are, there's two little green plastic things. You know, that's your turn signals. So, um, be careful. Those lenses will fall, fall out. Mine just fell out. Um, but it was recovered pretty easy, so... Apparently, all I have to do is, uh, well, here's my tack. We flick her over, and uh, we just start replacing. Looks like we undo that one, that one, that little fella. Shoot, do we redo them all? Except for, yeah, we don't have to worry about that fella. Or that guy, or that guy. But all of these ones, apparently, yep, we gotta remove them. So uh, we might as well find some tools, huh? And it says eight quarter inch nuts, so that's pretty cool. We're, uh, we're happy with that. He, uh, he's taking all the guesswork out for you, so that's a plus. That's uh, that's not the right one, so we're gonna get it. We're gonna grab that one too, just because. It looks to me like this one might have a different size nut on there also. Question mark and a questioning voice. So we're gonna see. Uh, that is not it. I didn't grab a quarter, I grabbed a seven, thinking, you know, why not? But this, yeah, see, now this is the feller that was... That one right there on the oil one is actually an 8 or a 5 sixteenths. So, being that you have to redo, take that one off there, make sure you get the right one for that, and, you know. All right, 30 seconds. The good thing is, is my quarter inch set is just, it's organized in a way only I can tell you. Only I can tell you I don't know exactly where I put, you know, like, I see, I knew it was there. I, I knew it. I knew it was there. Let's see. And that's it. So it's a quarter inch for these fellas here, 5 sixteenths in, or 8 millimeter for that one right there. Lift off. And looky there, install on tack, boom, right like that. So, let's get our tool that we just left in here. Not bang the door on the fender of the car. This is the green thing I was telling you about. See that? Yep, that goes right up there where your turn signal sits. So, one, make sure you don't lose it, or you can even change them if you want. You can put like a piece of red up there or something if you got something clear but you know to each their own you do you i'm gonna do me you know so i'm gonna take these fellers off of here and uh by gers we should have a working tack here uh real real shortly so we're gonna take this one off this feller right here now you're not gonna to wanna to over tighten this either. These things are not tight. They are like mildly snug. I'm sure there's some sort of, uh, you know, torque spec, I don't know it, but like it is not much. It's enough to hold the board on, if that makes any kind of sense. You'll see whenever you take it off, 
there's not much to this sucker. I'm actually pretty excited to uh, to try this out. I have never ever repaired one of these. This is actually the junkyard, well, not really junkyard, but the parts car gauge cluster because the guy I got the car off of messed the plug up in the back of the original gauge cluster and I don't know how anything worked on the gauge cluster. I'm not even sure if it did, I can't remember. All right, that's all of those ones. So now we switch over to the 5 sixteenths. And, oh, hello, hold on. I'll take this fella off of here. Yeah, how you like that, huh? Look, Ma, no hands. And I don't think you can confuse those fellers. There's just a little bit of difference. These, this one here was a little tighter than the other for the oil gauge. I'm not really sure why. But it looks like you just can... Okay, like I said, you can just go magically. Nope, did I forget one? Boom, 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 boom. That's all it says. Maybe you gotta wiggle it just a little bit. Maybe you lift that. Oh, okay. See, I'm glad a dumb Ben did that. So you put that out of the way. And then I'm guessing you go back to the quarter inch feller. Make sure you know which way you put that on. I'm glad I'm recording this. I could have messed that up pretty good. So there's two quarter inch ones underneath that first 5 sixteenths fella. Now, if I would have read the instructions at all, it actually says put them to the side and then go get the other ones. But, you know, I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't read it. Except that right there. Now, real easy here, guys and gals. Tack, oil. Oil, tack. And we're just going to go right down. Hello? Are you there? There we go. And we're just going to put him back together. And we're, apparently he's got a date on there and everything. Look at that. That's pretty cool. He put his somebody's initials on there. DJ, I'm guessing that must be one of his kids or something. Heck, I don't know. But it's something, Johnson, I'm sure. And it says V8. So you know it's a V8 tachometer circuit board. That's pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and button this up together. I don't know if you guys necessarily... Well, I'll just show you exactly how tight we're going to tighten these puppies. We're going to go... This is exactly how tight we're going to go. Okay, she touched, and that's it. She touched, and then we're going like a quarter turn or something. We're not doing a whole heck of a lot on it. And we're going to go in the backwards order that we went in just because it feels right. You know, we're not going to do a star pattern or any of that kind of stuff like on wheels, but you know. But as you can see, this is not, this isn't super, that's just not hard to do. I'm going to place that burger on there. We're going to run these down. We're just going to set these on here because we're going to come back to them here in a second since we got our quarter inch socket on there. But that's all we're going to do, guys. We're just going to run these down right until they snug or until they touch. Okay, they ain't touching yet. I just want to show you on this and then. Okay, cut. Oops, see how the paper slid? We're done. If you crack that circuit board, you're done. This part's junk. So I'm going to finish tightening these down. We're going to throw it in. We're going to see what we got, all right? Give me just a few minutes. Well, I, uh, you remember the little green circle with turn signal things? That actually was the hardest part of this whole job because they kept falling out of their little holes they were supposed to go in. So I just took a dab of grease 
and I put it on the back side of the black panel. I should have showed it, but I didn't, sorry. But you'll see what I'm talking about. For some reason, I don't have any clear silicone. I was gonna put a dab of clear silicone on the black piece that, let me just show you real quick. So underneath this clear plastic, here is this black piece right here, okay? Behind this black piece, can you see those circles? Yep. Right underneath it, those kind of set recessed just a little bit. And they're supposed to, I'm sure if you're working on a bench like this, it would be just perfect. We're working in a car, so they kept falling out. Anytime this would wiggle, you know, like this, because you're trying to slide pieces in and yeah. So I took a dab of grease and went right around the ring of this just enough to catch that little piece of plastic. It worked, okay. I tried not to. I actually looked for clear silicone. Yeah, it didn't work. So let's see what we got now. Hopefully we have a working tachometer. Let's just see. And let's see, does lights work? Okay, lights work. So make sure she's in neutralis. Mine is the plug-in that goes, and I was, I was a little worried about that, just because. But yeah, mine's the gauge, or not the gauge. I'm sorry, mine is the, um, the plug-in in the very back of the gauges. The guy crumbled it, the plug-in. I don't know how you do that. So we're going to have to get like behind there and manipulate it some sort of way and make sure it's plugged in even more gooder. -er. And honestly, he broke it free from the actual dash part. So, yeah, we're just going to have to like wiggle it and like hopefully it clicks into place. But nonetheless, if your gauge is really doing that, I promise you it's going to work. It's just not going to work if you're... Maybe I can show you on this other... The original set of gauges. Um, might make sense if you guys can actually see what the heck I'm talking about. So I'll show you what he butchered on these gauges. And then you'll see... Now this is the original set. This is what I had to work with. Yeah, I don't know... This is supposed to be the circuit board, and yes, you can buy the circuit board, but you see how nasty this is? The plug-in, he broke free from... This is just supposed to slide in. It's supposed to just, you know, you take it and you push it in the dash, and it connects in these. It's, it's really not that hard, I promise you. I... I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't think he knew about these bolts down here at the bottom whenever he was removing the gauge cluster. See, if you don't know, then um, I think them. pretty sure there's two bolts down there at the bottom. And if you don't know, you're going to break your gauges getting them in and out. If something's holding it in a certain spot, wouldn't you check? No. Apparently, you just yank and yank and you know until something gives and that's just not gooder so unfortunately this is what's going on the plug-in in the back of that on mine is what's bad so i kind of maybe thought that was it but then again that gauge cluster that had come out of that particular car did set for at least bare minimum five years with the windows down yeah so there was good reason to believe that the gauge may have been absolutely at fault and just look at it just look at this board 
does that look like it's in great shape at all up at the top i mean granted we can't run i didn't run any tests on it i mean it's discolored and stuff it kind of looked like it may have been overheated you know apparently it's a good one um but nonetheless i still recommend you this is a pretty common problem in these third gens to uh, get on ebay and buy from this fella right here cajun tax shops because i have no doubt whatsoever that that is a 100 percent good thing that i just put on there i i was fearing that was going to happen i was hoping that i got it good it it's really a mother because you got to reach up underneath the dash part and push in on the gauges at the exact same time hoping that they click i thought they did apparently i still have a crap connection which really stinks <sighs> it's going to have to be fixed because i don't want to drive this car without attack and oil pressure and you know what i call like the bare essentials but nonetheless guys if you're having an attack problem and some yahoo hasn't broken the back of your gauge cluster or the plug-in that goes to it Whew. yep so i'll be doing that one off camera because that's typically not something you would ever face <laughs> and that's the reason why we switched the gauge cluster out and apparently it really only had anything to do with that and maybe the fuel sending unit i'm not sure because uh the fuel sending unit on this one like the sending unit is actually brand new you guys know that if you've watched this series on this car um the fuel sending unit is brand new um fuel pumps brand new of course like 87 percent of this car is brand new so anyway i'm rattling it's free i'm not charging anything and uh man i'm glad we cleaned up that vin number dude that thing looks good anyway i just add something shiny caught me you guys ever torn apart a battery part pack and uh i don't know like one of these fellers and just wanted to see what made it tick this is what encouraged me to do my last little trick okay this is what is inside and yep you're seeing it i do not have colossal hands and uh, that's that's pretty rinky dink right does that remind you of like a i don't know a motorcycle battery or something or a dirt bike battery so that's what encouraged me to do this number whenever we start getting the uh car trailer all hooked up this one right here is 139 dollars with your core charge which that's going to be my core charge it's a 12 volt battery they'll accept it so we're going to send it straight to the junk pile but uh for now on i believe i am going to carry this particular thing now i still have the little mini jump box just because those things are handy and i want to put one on like pretty much every car i got or at least like transfer it because it's easier and i would recommend you guys do that too at least keep you one if you're going on a trip what have you you never know what could happen so they are handy but i don't know I, i'm kind of got sour grapes because that battery pooped out in like 30 seconds of pulling that car on the car trailer hashtag not happy but anyway hopefully this was helpful to you guys apparently it's not helpful to me because uh but we'll get it that's not a big deal um we'll be doing at least two more things on the the, the old mullet machine here we're going to also put the silver stripe down the side the hockey stripe i've had it for you know like how long have we been together three years i think about three years it was like one of the first things i bought i don't really have an answer why but it is so anyway hockey stripe will go on we got the exhaust to do and we're going to fix that daggone steering where it's got so much slop in it that's going to be the next trick for this one 
Uh, I still got to wire up my lift. Yep, it's, it's all ready to go except for the wiring. Well, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, remember how I said the uh, tachometer didn't work because it was bad wiring in the back? Nope, it just started working because apparently the tack was stuck. And she's revving correctly. So we're happy about that. I just wanna let you guys know that the circuit board absolutely did work. My gauge was stuck. Go figure, huh? It probably been stuck like that for years. But I couldn't wrap it up without you guys knowing that that actually worked. And uh, this is actually like a day or two later, so I just happened to move the IROC so I could mess with the lift and, you know, try to get power to it, see what the heck I am not doing right, and, you know. Anyway, that's another video. Hopefully later this tonight and whatever. We'll see. And uh, anyway, now that's the real end of this video. See you guys next time. All right. It's good to go, except for the wiring, because I have like 12 different things going on all at once. It's my fault. Self-induced. I know. I know. But uh, nonetheless... We're going to wrap that thing up, hopefully this week, so we can start using it. Put the exhaust on this puppy, and then mullet machine, she goes to the upholster next week, and she done. She, we're, it's time to enjoy summer with her, and I really can't wait. Um, this, this one's going to be a lot of fun. It whips heads everywhere. I've taken it so far, so... And anybody that's seen it, they really, really, really dig the mullet machine. So, pretty happy with that project. And then we can finally start moving to a different project. I know you're excited because gosh dang I am. We'll move to that and that 69 simultaneously. That means at the same time, I think, if I Googled it right. And we might throw the S10 in there too. I'm really not sure. Uh... At least we're going to do a 5-3 breakdown and cam swap, do all that good jazz. And uh, it's we're going to be busy this summer and all into next winter and the following winter and like 12 years from now, you know. So we'll have at least like 13, 1400 episodes. And by then, I don't even know. It's, it's hard to tell. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate every one of you. And if you don't mind, hit the old subscribe and like button down there. Tell your friends. And uh, it's getting a heck of a lot better. We'll see you guys next time here on Right Turn Garage TV. Y'all have a great weekend.